Hey guys, welcome to Ring Still TV. Today is episode 10 of our $500 1,000 yard steel elk challenge. Stay tuned. Okay guys, so uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna bed this, uh, this action to the uh, stock. And I've thought long and hard about how I want to do this. Uh, we have a pretty deep gap here and a deep gap up here. I think I did uh, some measurements for you guys earlier. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to router out this little area here and some channels. And then we're going to put some JB Weld down into these sections here and on here. And then probably maybe an inch into the uh, chamber area of the barrel. And we're going to bed that here in the front. In the back, I'm going to out out a little area here with the Dremel tool and um, and we're just going to bed this little section back here. So just these two little areas, hopefully some of that JB Weld will get down into these pillars. They're pretty sloppy. Um, this, I don't know if you can see it, but you can see how sloppy it is. And as I look down into the pillars, you can actually see where the uh, screws, threads, we're banging against the uh, pillar on the inside and indenting it. And I think that was happening on recoil. So uh, I think this will help us a lot to keep the, uh, the receiver in its proper place inside the stock. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm just gonna take this, uh, this bit here on my Dremel tool. You can see that. And then we'll just kind of work this area in here. So I'll leave the uh, I'll leave the camera running. You guys can see what I'm doing. Okay guys, so um, you can see here, I've just routed out a, some channels here with the Dremel. We're gonna fill this up with um, with JB Weld, and then we'll set that receiver down in there and uh, let it bed here on the front. I did the same tape thing. I routed out this section here to give a little bit more surface area, put some channels into this block here. We wanna be sure we leave enough block uh, for the, for the uh, receiver to sit down on it when we tighten it down. We'll also fill these two big holes here with JB Weld, these front two holes here with JB Weld, and then we're gonna come out to somewhere in here and uh, do some more JB Weld. So let me get this blown off and uh, we'll start the next process. Okay guys, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this thing prepped to, to be bedded. Normally, this all would have been bedded prior to us doing any shooting on the gun. But um, I wanted to show you guys a before and after what the bedding job and the crown fix and the uh, stock stiffener could potentially do. I don't know if it'll be better or not, but I, I wanted to do a before and after, so it was important I did that. Because of that, we've already mounted the scope, so I'm gonna leave that on there. Um, I've just chucked this up in my vise uh, so that I can work on it. We're gonna put some release agent on here. We're gonna get some modeling clay into all the holes, and we're gonna prep that for um, getting the bedding done. So. Anyway, uh, sit tight. What we're going to do is we're going to remove the uh, trigger assembly. We're going to remove the uh, bolt release here. And uh, then we'll start putting the uh, release agent and modeling clay in here. Now with all that removed, we're going to clean this up with some um, isopropyl alcohol. All 
All right, guys, now we're going to use our uh, kiwi paste wax. Uh, I've gone with the natural this time, and we'll just get this on everything we don't want the, uh, the stuff to stick to. Next up guys, we're just going to use some Play-Doh here, fill all the holes. One spot that I forgot was right here. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. We're only putting a little bit right back here in the very back, but I just wanna cover all this stuff to make sure we don't have any problems. All right guys, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna be bedding this little area back here and this little area right up here to about an inch four to this. I've got plenty of release agent in case it squeezes out and goes into some different areas. So yeah, that looks pretty good. We'll get started on the stock next. All right guys, we're gonna start on the stock next. Uh, I've just got the um, uh, magazine in here just to kind of see this, this area right here is what's gonna get done. And this little area here in the back is gonna get done. Just wanna see what clearance. We're gonna make a little dam here and a little dam up here. Uh, and then uh, uh, and then protect this area here with some um, play-doh so modeling clay so it doesn't get uh, doesn't get uh, JB weld down in it so let's get this out of here I am going to just check this for level real quick Perfect. Let's clamp this down. Okay, and there's another little dam there. Should keep the JB weld in this section here, and then back here in the back in that section. So, uh, I think our next step here will be to mix up the JB Weld, kind of get it uh, into these, these areas, and then we'll set the receiver down in here and tighten it up, and we should be good to go. Okay, guys, one thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, put these, or the action screws that go down in here, uh, I'm going to get them good and, and waxed up. So, um, I think we've got everything ready to go here. I think what I'm going to try and do is we're going to mix this JB Weld here in this uh, bottom of this round solo cup. And I've never done this before, but we're going to we're going to try and get that JB Weld into this syringe. This is a one ounce syringe, and I think we can squirt it down into these holes using that and uh, kind of get it laid out better. Um, at least that's the plan. We'll see if it works. If it don't work, well, I learned something. So. Same thing, equal parts.
right, we got the JB Weld in there. Looks like it's going to work pretty good, actually. So let's get this moved up in here. And we'll start applying this. I'm going to start in the front. Oh yeah, guys, this is the way to go. This is the way to go. It's just squirting right into those holes so easy. Filling them right up. I'd have been pushing them with a toothpicks and all kinds of stuff but that's fitting in there just fine I'm gonna leave that hole open just a little bit because it's gonna it's gonna work its way down there once we put the once we put the uh, receiver in there now with what I've got left here I'm just gonna kind of get it up here in the front area we're going to use that to just skim coat this area a little bit. Nothing major. I'm just going to use my finger. It's a little bit messy. The reason why I'm skim coating this here is uh, this concrete is not waterproof. So my thought process was, we'll just use this JB Weld to give us the waterproofness. So it's just a very light skim coat. I'm not adding any depth to this at all, or at least try not to. All right, guys, we're ready to lay this down. Um, so. Uh, since, uh, since I skim coated the front of that deal, I went ahead and put some more, um, shoe polish down all the way down the, the front of the stock just to make sure I didn't stick on one of those, one of those deals there. I'm going to just double check everything because once we set this down, we're pretty well committed and this looks really good. All right. So here we go. That is in. I'm going to thread the bolts up into the screw holes here. All right. We got those tightened down. Um, what I'm going to do now is just go around and clean up. Make sure we don't have any loose. JB Weld coming up on the sides and looks like we got a few little spots. guys last thing I'm gonna do here I've got these two uh, big rubber bands I'm gonna just tighten this down so we can back those action screws out a little bit but before I'm gonna do, do that I'm just gonna double check the action screws and uh, make sure they don't need to be torqued all the way down they just need to be bottomed out for this process and then we'll back them off just a little bit um, we'll back them off just a little bit after we get this this rubber band kind of on there so uh, let's see what do we want to do here let's do the uh, let's do the front one first All right, guys, I think we're all set here. So uh, let me see if we can see. We're nice embedded back here in the back. In this area here, we're nice embedded in the uh, front area here. You can see here and here. 
We've got all our seepage out. We are nicely aligned in the front here, in that area that we uh, that we inleted. So uh, at this point, we're done bedding. We're going to let this rest for um, 24 hours. I'll come back tomorrow, and we'll loosen it all up. We'll pop it off, and uh, we should be good to go. So, uh, guys, like I said, I have no clue. This isn't something I would do with a, with a uh, plastic stock, but um, we're giving it a try. Maybe you guys will find this useful. Um, so, anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Okay, YouTube. Welcome back to the bench. So, this is the moment that always scares the heck out of me. It doesn't matter how many times you put bedding material into a stock and glue your receiver to it. Uh, you always come out of the thing wondering if you've just glued the whole damn thing together. Um, we've got compounded issues because we're using a plastic stock and again I've never done this so if it doesn't work I'm blaming you guys. Um, so anyway, let's give it a try and see. Oh, hey, put down in the comments. What do you think? Is this going to work? Are we going to get this receiver out of here? Um, is the JB Weld going to actually do anything? I, I don't even know if JB Weld sticks to plastic. In fact, here's the here's a little 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 thing of uh, plastic here we had uh, that we did the JB Weld in. Now, granted, this Solo Cup was really um, really uh, slick, but you can see here the JB Weld it just spills right away from that. So who knows, I can pull this receiver out and the and the JB Weld will be stuck to the receiver and, and hadn't done nothing. So anyway, let's give it a try. I figure uh, I'm either going to be a hero or a zero. Um, I'm hoping zero is not, not where I'm going to end up. So we'll get our little straps off here. First things first. I need to figure out if the... Uh, Oh, action screws are even going to loosen up. Alright, no issues there. It's tight. With any luck, some JB Weld has gone down into the uh, pillars. And uh, if it has, it'll be uh, pillar bedding within a pillar. I don't even know if that's a thing. Maybe we just invented that. So anyway, front action screw is coming off now. I can tell you right now, the JB Weld, yeah, it's gone down there pretty good. I can see it. We'll take this uh, rear action screw off. Hopefully it's not stuck, but I'll bet it's just fine. Yep. No issues there. Plenty of release agent on it. So we'll get this out of here. And now the big moment will be uh, seeing if, if the stock will release from the action. All right, let's give it a go. Uh, oh yeah, looks like it's going to come just fine. Okay, let's take a look in here and see what we've done. Whoa, hey guys, that looks pretty good. I... That came out way better than I expected. Um, so, just real quick, back here you can see that small section that we pillar bedded. It is on there good and tight. I'm just going to go in here and relieve this just a little bit with, uh, with the Dremel tool. Just get these little chunks out. Um, I can tell you just looking at this one piece right here, you know, it's got a little bit of, it's not sticking real good, but I think because we um, routed this out in here, I think it's going to be just fine. Same thing here in the front. You can see where the, uh, where the uh, lug was down in the receiver, and it has completely filled that section. And then here in the front where we just kind of kind of laid this out here, it is bedded in here real nice. I'll need to get this uh, get this out of here. We'll also probably need to get in here and 
add a little bit more underneath, but wow. That looks really good. I can also see down in the down in the hole here, you can see JB Weld. I don't know if you remember from the last video, but this was really loose and, and it, it actually is threaded in there now. So that screw's not moving at all once it's in there. Um, I tell you what we'll do is let me just get a little bit of this, this, uh, this out. What I want to do is I just want to quickly, I just want to quickly, uh, set the receiver back in and just see how much stronger it is compared to where we were at. So I'll just take some of this out here. I'm assuming it's stronger. Who knows? It's like Christmas right now. Okay, I just did a really super quick cleaning. We didn't even take it all off. I'm glad I went up here and put some wax. There's a there's a couple spots there of epoxy, but it's just coming right off. It didn't stick to it at all from where we put the uh, epoxy under the thing. So this will all clean up real nice. Uh, looks like my chamber's good. That hole that's there. Uh, in the receiver. I actually uh, put a bunch of wax up inside here so any JB weld that came through there would not uh, affect anything. So what I want to do now is just kind of stick this in here and lock it in. If it will lock in. There it is. And I want to check and see how it moves. So you remember Hold on, let me get my um, let me get my uh, bipod so we can check it with the bipod. Okay, I'm back. I uh, what I did is I just put the bipod on, and I've kind of got it. I think in the same view from earlier, and maybe we'll put the two side by side. Two things. Number one is there's no movement of the uh, receiver. If I try and twist it this direction here around, that's all gone now. There's no action screws in here at all. This is. This receiver's just stuck down in there in its spot. The other thing, if you remember, when we pulled this forward and back, here, let me get my hand in view. When we pushed this forward and back, we could hear a, we could hear an audible clicking. That is gone. It, it doesn't move at all. And no receiver action screws in. I'm going to torque this down real quick, and we're just going to see how stiff all this is up in the front. So let me do that real quick. tighten down to 45 inch pounds so this is locked into the receiver no movement front and back this is what I really want to check out here so you remember when we just put in the um, stock stiffener in the front we hadn't bedded this yet I had done a video where I kind of moved the barrel and you could see that it was fine in the channel though it was moving this is what I want to test again maybe we'll put them side by side and what we're testing for here is, did the bed bedding lock this down any further? Oh yeah. It is moving, but so, so little. Before I could actually pull this down into the foregrip, I can't do that now. It does not touch at all. It is locked in there. It's every bit as good as a wood stock at this point. Uh, so yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about that Guys I feel like this was a success here so far We'll have to do some testing and and just see under recoil uh, Shooting it whether or not the bedding holds up or not in this plastic stock but uh, you know it had those aluminum pillars in there and I built those channels cut those channels in around the areas that we bedded so that ensured that the uh, JB Weld got down into those aluminum pillars. So I know for sure we should have very, very good uh, connectivity between the aluminum and the, and the JB Weld. So uh, I'm thinking that's all going to still real good. Um, so, so far so good. So I'm going to thoroughly clean all this up at this point. We'll get this gun back together, get the bolt back in it, make sure everything looks real good. And... Um, I think the next place you're going to see me is on the range. 
and uh, we'll do a little bit of shooting. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. All right, guys, we're back here down on the range. Uh, I've got two targets set up. I've got 10 rounds ready to go. These are identical to the rounds. I loaded them all at the same time from the first video. So uh, <coughs> these are absolutely identical to the first rounds. Um, just to re refresh, uh, we corrected the issue with the muzzle uh, by lapping it. We also free floated the barrel and stiffened the forend with the rockite. And then we bedded the action to this stock. So uh, now it's just our follow-up test to see how, see how we did. So sit tight and we'll put some rounds down range. Center. 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 Okay. I shot my uh, target off. <laughs> I'm just going to have to guess here where that was. Darn it. All right, guys, I can tell you right now, it is shooting much, much better. Yeah, I just kind of winged it in there. I don't, I shot my target off. Let me, um, I'm going to uh, lower this. One mil. So we don't hit the target on this next five. All right, I'm gonna let this um, I'm gonna let this cool off and we'll we'll shoot another group. All right guys, we've uh, let the uh, barrel cool. I actually walked down there to look at the uh, <coughs> the first group of five. Four were touching and uh, one was off to the left a little bit. Um, you know, I shot that, I shot my bullseye off, so I, uh, I don't know about that, that last round that went to the left. I felt like I got a good pull on it, so it either threw it or it didn't. Uh, we're going to shoot another group of five over here on the second target. Um, and, uh, I've lowered, I've lowered the, uh, the elevation here just so it'll shoot underneath it. All right, here we go. Centered. 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 That was centered. So, guys, what I'm seeing right now is, uh, I, I think I put about four rounds into the same hole, or very close to the same hole. Looks like there's one, the very first one I shot was to the right just a little. Um, which is kind of what I experienced with the uh, left target too. So we'll go get the target. Just what I can see visually in the scope. The gun is significantly better than it was uh, before shooting. It definitely is more consistent. Um, and I would say it's even easier to shoot. Uh, that additional weight that we put into the gun in the fore end uh, has really helped at least settle the gun down. It, it's not nearly as strong uh, of a recoil as it was before. So. Anyway, let me go get the stuff and uh, we'll take a look at these targets and see what we've got. Okay, guys, back here at the bench. There we go. It's all done. There's our uh, 300 Win Mag TC Compass. Uh, everything is completed on this gun at this point. The build process is done. And I showed you just a little bit ago the results uh, of the shooting of this gun. Before we did the crown lapping, the inletting of the barrel and the rockite, uh, and also uh, bedding the receiver to the stock, we were shooting at 1.2 MOA. I showed you the very first group I ever shot with this gun before we did any of that work. Um, after we completed all that work, the exact same uh, load that I had before with no changes at all, shot a 0.55 MOA after the fact. So I think the results kind of speak for themselves. I, I do want to make note of two things. One, I dropped a flyer from each of those groups. So what you're seeing is a four shot group, even though I shot five. Uh, even if you put that fifth uh, shot in there, we're still 
uh, reducing the group size by half. Um, so I think that's super important. The other thing is keep in mind, there has been zero load development done on this gun. I have not done anything. All we did was get the cartridge. I put a minimum charge weight in there from the books and then I seated the bullet um, to magazine length. That's it. No, no additional development past that. So to get to 0.55 MOA with no load development, I think is very successful for this gun. I'm super excited to see where we get once we actually take the time to do the load development. Big question is, uh, how much did we spend? So now that the build is done, we're at $495.22 out the door. That was with shipping costs, with taxes, with everything rolled into the deal. That was our total all-in budget for this gun. Still have a little bit of room if we break something or figure out we need something down the road. So uh, we're definitely under our $500 budget. A few questions that I got uh, that I wanted to address now. Uh, you guys asked me, how much does this thing weigh? Well, uh, out the door with everything that you see here, I just took it off the scale. That is with everything, including the sling, the bipod, I mean everything. It's 10 and a half pounds, 10 pounds, eight ounces exactly. Uh, not the heaviest gun in the world, not the lightest gun in the world. It's not a Tika ultra light, uh, but definitely um, serviceable for hunting. Um, you should be able to carry this in the field without any problems. There are a lot of guns in that 10 pound uh, weight range. Uh, that guys are shooting with. So 10 and a half pounds, I don't feel like it's too heavy. Uh, the other thing is the balance. How does this thing balancing? Well, you can see here, I've got it up on a block. That's an oak block that I put there and it is balanced exactly, exactly at the front of the receiver where the barrel mates to the receiver. Um, I mean, it's dead on. And that is, to me, that's a perfect uh, balance point for a gun. It's halfway between where your, your forehand would be on the foregrip and where your hand would be on the trigger. That'll make a gun that swings well and also should stay pretty steady for you on offhand. So pretty excited about that. I didn't have to do anything special to the stock to get there. Um, it just happened to be in just pure luck that we actually ended up with a balance point there. Uh, so at this point, guys, we are done with the build. I mean, I don't have anything else to do to this gun. I think at this point we're ready to just go on and start reloading. So that's what I'm going to do next is I'm going to move on to reloading. Now, what you're going to see is um, when I did this build series, my plan has always been, and I know these videos have been long. They've been about 20 minutes to 30 minutes, probably averaging around 20 minutes. Um, that was really on purpose. And, and what I wanted to do with this build series on future builds when I go into scope mounting or um, uh, betting the action or any of those items, I wanna be able to reference back to this build series. I'm not gonna repeat all this information every time we go to do a new build. All I'm gonna do is say, hey, if you'd like to learn something about uh, betting a scope rail, go here, and it'll take you to this video on mounting the scope. Uh, same thing with that, betting the action and all those items, I'm just gonna point you back to this. So that's why there was so much detail involved around these initial builds. The other big question that I get a lot on this gun is uh, how much time did all this work take? Well, you guys saw it. For you guys, it was 10 videos. This is episode number 10, averaging about uh, 20 minutes per video. That's going to put you somewhere in the uh, three to four hour pri uh, price range, the three or four hour uh, time frame. Uh, for me, this was just a couple days worth of work um, and not even that much. Most of the time was waiting on the JB Weld to cure for 24 hours. So there were some, definitely some stopping points there. I would say if I was going to sit down and do this without videoing or anything, uh, total labor would be about three hours of total work to get it to this point uh, with maybe two or three uh, two or three times that we're going to have to sit down and wait for the JB Weld to go. So guys, there's, there's not much, um, there's not much labor involved in this. I mean, this is all basic stuff here that you guys should be able to do at home. The other thing I want to point out is if you'll remember and look back at the videos, everything we did here was with basic hand tools. There was nothing that I did on this gun that required a lathe or anything like that. And that was on purpose. If you guys want to go back and, and try and do some of this to your own gun, it was all done with basic hand tools. There is one exception is I use the lapping bar on the uh, scope and that's a specialized tool. It's not an expensive tool, it's super inexpensive, but that lapping bar was the only thing that I think, if I remember correctly, was uh, special to this gun. Um, as far as the crown lapping, 
down on the other end there um you know you could do that with just a regular brass screw so don't feel like you have to go out and buy those brown nail lapping bars uh, so uh, back to uh, where we're going to go from here. We're going to go to reloading and what you're going to see is less detail from me on the reloading. I'm going to talk through Saturday. I'm going to move a little bit faster through this. I'm going to move faster through the tall target test and all the shooting that we're going to do. And I'm doing that because I do plan to come back and do a reloading series. Uh, basically a three-part series, one for beginners, everything you need to do reloading, uh, and then an advanced class that will get into a little bit more specialized tools, some, some techniques you can use to make your reloading better, and then finally an expert class, probably more for bench rest type guys. So uh, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this build series. We are moving on to reloading. And, uh, you know, guys, like, share, and subscribe. Send people out here to take a look at it. If you have any comments, leave those below. I'm always happy to answer any questions. And until next time, happy shooting. Mm -hmm.